The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 466 Baited and Chumped Shinespark? Who was Brain? Shinespark started, not expecting anything but silence. She and Niala were sitting on a bench within sight of Crystal's door, but not close enough to make out what was being said inside, even though the mansion was quiet. Sorry? Niala was looking at her. That may recognize me, didn't she? I'm not the first one to use this armor. Was bringing someone like me in the same situation? Uh, Shinespark rubbed her face. Listen, we're sitting in the middle of a hallway where anyone could hear us, and that's sort of classified. I'll tell you, but we'll have to go somewhere else. Somewhere a whole lot more private than this. It's that big a deal, huh? Niala asked softly, watching as Shinespark grabbed an out-of-date flyer from a nearby bulletin board, flipped it over, and imprinted a message telling Valet where they'd be with a fine point of magic from her horn. No, it's all history now. Shinespark straightened up, leaving the note on a bench. There are just... A lot of ponies we left behind who will be happier thinking the story they know is the full story, uh, myself included. We didn't really want Ironridge following us here after everything that had happened. I feel like I have so much to catch up on, Niela admitted, following Shinespark out of the building. I must have thousands of years of world history to learn. At the very least, I should know who you and this armor are. Valet was more concerned with being glad to see me again than telling me things I didn't immediately need to know. Mm, Shinespark nodded. All your friends are something special, some for different reasons than others. Maple and Slipstream left comfortable, ordinary lives to heed the call of adventure. Gerardo, I still don't know what his story is, but he's definitely got one. I'm sure everyone would appreciate if you asked to get to know them too. As for me, she sighed, making it outside the building and walking around to the backside where the town's sprawl was stopped by the winding river and farms and countryside spread into the distance. Let me tell you about Brain. Niala listened as Shinespark recounted the armor's origin and gradual improvement, Ernbai's involvement in her own role masquerading as a mysterious armored knight who led the spirit of Sosa. It wasn't a full retelling of her story because that would have taken days, but Niala still brightened when Brain stormed the defense force base to try to rescue Maple and Starlight, and shrank when Brain finally met her end when Shinespark reclaimed her cutie mark atop the collapsing dam. I see, Niala said eventually. So it was you only like me as well. I still stay up wondering what to think of it, Shunsberg admitted. Exactly how much Brain and I were the same. We did experiments and everything, and we were always linked in what we wanted and other things. I learned to control her somewhat by wearing my heart on my sleeve. If there was something I felt strongly about, she felt about it too. But when I feel strongly about something I can change, I act on it myself. She just had greater freedom to do so because she wasn't a princess in an industrial society, so maybe I wasn't so much controlling or influencing her as I was both of us at once. I guess I'll never figure out whether she was a puppet or a clone or we were somehow two halves of the same pony, she sighed. Either way, we're back together now. I'm whole again. So don't lose heart or anything. I wasn't, Niala promised. I just wonder how it works. What do you get to keep your body when your cutie mark is removed? You said you still felt and acted like you and everything. I wonder if my old body would even remember me. Hmm, Shinespark shrugged. My cutie mark came back to me the instant I freed it from the armor. It remembered. Yeah, but... Niala hesitated. You are still you, somehow, and I'm supposedly some mean scientist now. Why am I different? Or is it you who's different, or me? Shinespark grimaced. I wish I could help you, but it's something I'd have to research to find out. We were always more interested in the applications of a cutie mark once it was out than what happened when you took it out of ponies. Experimenting on myself was one thing, but that's not something you want to subject others to, you know? Niala hung her head. Yeah, especially if it can do things like what happened to me. Shinespark opened her mouth to reply. But before she could, Valet bustled around the corner, looking thoroughly wound up. Ah, she moaned, wings spread, flopping face down in the wet grass. Valet! 
Schweinsberg jumped to her hooves, moving to Valet's side and putting an unsure hoof on her shoulder blades. Are you okay? We're not going back there, Valet growled into the grass, trying to drain her tension. Bananas, I feel awkward. Whatever you want to investigate, we can do it another way. I wish Amber was here. Amber? Schweinsberg frowned. What happened? You were just trying to see Crystal, right? Was it a bad experience? You think? Miala deadpan, kneeling slowly to make sure she didn't fall over. I'm guessing we should go back to the ship then. No, Valet grunted, wings still twitching. I need to cool my head a bit. She... Ugh. Valet? Schweinsberg frowned in concern. Valet gave a massive huff. I go in there. She's doing nothing. Doesn't care about anything. No motivation. I can do whatever I want. Blah, blah, blah. Real nice and helpless. She's also showing off that cute dress all the maids have and her legs and bananas. Even though she's way older than me, there's some nice legs. And then, I don't know if she notices I'm there because of her or that I'm looking or that I don't want to leave or what, but she gets up and starts exercising of all things in the dress while continuing to be a massive pity me dormant and... <laughs> She planted her face in the grass again. Eventually, I've completely forgotten what I was there for, and she finally tells me to get lost, that she's not looking, and that she's pregnant. She was turning me on while... I've never fallen into a trap so hard in my life. She read me like a book, and I got ridiculously baited. At least I think I made a cool exit and got in the last word, but bananas, I feel like I'd get less abused talking to the Wendigo than her. And the worst part is, not only do I feel super awkward now for thinking about a mom like that, but I can't even stop thinking about her. I've been being a perfect gentle mayor for so long, and when she tossed me and she was so hot. Schweinsberg nodded in sympathy, telekinetically hauling the lay to her hooves. Note to Amber, you're high strung, like needy mares, and respond well to bait. Would it help to think about something else? Like, did he find out anything at all about Chauncey? Who's Amber? Nyala asked, tilting her head. Valet groaned and mumbled something unintelligible. Please put me down. I'm trying to cool off. Oh, uh, Shinepack gently dropped her. Sorry. <sighs> Valet rolled over in the wet grass. Chauncey? Never came up. I don't think we got beyond, hey, can we talk? Hey, why are you such a wet blanket? And, hey, you're kind of turning me on here. Shinesburg sighed. Well, I guess that didn't go well then. Anything you want to do next? Definitely not crawl around a stuffy science lab, Valet whimpered. I need to repair my ego. Bananas, iron flanks made dealing with pushy basket cases like me look so easy. Why is it me who walks into the traps? Maybe because she doesn't get distracted? Shinesburg frowned. You look pretty distracted right now. Yeah, think, Valet growled. We could always ask Maple to talk to her instead, Niala offered helpfully, leaning in. Valet winced. No, no way. Iron Flanks is on vacation, and I can basically guarantee this hag will stress her out. She doesn't want to be helped, and Iron Flanks would take it way too personally and never rest again. And like... Call me paranoid or having a backlash, but Crystal was mean enough, I don't even know if she'd be a good guy if she came out of her room. Beats me what her deal is. She seemed nice enough when my nephew was with her earlier, Niala countered. Yep, sure did. Valet's wings were limp by now, but she hadn't refolded them. Oh, she was when I went in there at first, too. Oh, you can do anything you want to my stuff. I have no attachment to them whatsoever. You don't have to worry about what I want. I'm just a hot little blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I told you, I got chumped. Go talk to yourselves if you like. I think I'll pass, Shinesperk replied. We've got plenty of other leads to follow, and we don't even know what we're looking for. Think you're ready to go? <sighs> Valet lay chin down in the grass. A silence followed from there, with Niala giving the closest thing her metallic face could manage to a wistful look. Did the raindrops on the grass feel nice? Valet opened her eyes. Huh? The rain in the grass. Niala pointed a hoof. I... I can't feel things like that, but I can remember some of them. I don't think I've ever laid in grass before, but 
I know what the rain feels like against my face. I was thinking about that while we were in the storm earlier. The lay's ears folded. It's not like I remember, Niala went on. Just that I can imagine it, even though I don't have a face. It feels nice, doesn't it? Rain was pretty rare in Ice Beach, Vili finally sighed. It mostly snowed or did nothing at all. Only rained for maybe a few storms a year, and usually from the light clouds that followed after the brunt of the storm had gone past. There, rain on your face meant you'd just been weathering high winds in a cave on the ground, and now everyone was coming out to face the world again. You, um, really enjoyed showing it to me one time. Only one time. It wasn't a question so much as acceptance. I would have figured we'd do something like that whenever we could. It sounds like it was special. To me, yeah, Valise stretched, flexed, and got up, finally shaking out and folding her wings. You remember all that, huh? Despite being stuck in Moonglass for ages, you know what it's like to do all that stuff? Niala half nodded. Like I said, I can imagine it. I can think what having a body like yours would feel like. It just seems like it would feel right. Huh. Valise started trotting back around the mansion, aiming toward the commerce building. Yeah, well, consider my head cleared. Bananas, now I'm cold. Let's get back to the ship or something. End of chapter 466